So now that we have visibility and masking under our belt, let's talk about polygrouping. So we have the tool menu. I'm going to go ahead and shut down all of these extraneous menus we've been to using. And we're just going to open up polygroups here. So there's a lot of options in here. Some of them will be a little bit more useful when we get the hard surface or box modeling like group by normals and auto groups. But when we're talking about organic surfaces here, we can use visibility and masking to kind of dictate where our polygroups go. Now you may not have known it, but ever since we first turned our primitive mesh into a Make Poly Mesh 3D, we've been dealing with polygroups. So for example, if I go through here, I go to this menu here and I say, I wanna do a cylinder 3D and then I hit, see how it's white? Then I can go through here and initialize and I can make you know different adjustments. Then I hit Make Poly Mesh 3D, it changes color. That color is a polygroup. Now, because this is more of a hard surface object in that it has a top plane, a side plane, and a bottom plane, if we go down here to polygroups now, and we do this group by normals, you're gonna see we have an angle threshold. So we can click group by normals, and you're gonna see, because this angle right here, this threshold is set to 45, it's gonna go ahead and give this top one a polygroup and this bottom one a polygroup. Now, when we're using visibility, we can hold that control shift, you have select rectangle. You can of course grab all pieces of geometry like this or control shift drag to invert, control shift alt to get rid of some polygons like so, control shift tap to bring everything back. You can also use control shift select to select polygroups as well. So if you control shift tap on a polygroup, it'll select just that polygroup. Let's go ahead and turn our floor off here. So now I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. I'm gonna hit BZM, I'm gonna hover over an edge, I'm gonna hit spacebar, and we're going to bevel this edge loop complete and just bevel this in. And you're gonna see it gives us automatically a new polygroup. So every time we bevel, it gives us a new polygroup. Now, if you hold down Control Shift and you select uh, vertices that contain two polygroups, it's gonna select both of those polygroups. So we can select both of those, Control Shift to bring everything else back or select these two. It'll grab both of these. And you can also, with visibility selection, remember we have grow and shrink. If you do Control Shift S, that'll shrink. Control Shift X to expand. And you can just keep hitting Control Shift X to expand as well. And then Control Shift Tap to bring everything else back. And remember when we were doing Control Shift and select lasso, you can hold down Control Shift and select this edge, and that'll just go ahead and select an entire edge ring, and then you can invert that if you want to, etc. Now, speaking of visibility and polygroups, if we have Control Shift, grab Select Rectangle, we're gonna grab all these ones here, and let's hold down Control Shift and tap the between these two polygroups to select them both, and that'll get rid of those, because if we have visibility already activated, we already have these polygons showing, anything I do now by Control Shift tapping will get rid of those polygroups. Now, if I just tap them here, it'll grab that polygroup. If I control shift drag to invert it, I can now tap that polygroup. I can control shift drag to invert again, and I got those two selected. Or I can hold down control shift, isolate these two. A lot of different ways. Or I can go to the side here, hold down control shift, grab all of those. Control shift drag to invert that. Control shift tap to grab that polygroup. Control shift drag to invert that. Now I've got these ones here. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. So a lot of different ways to kind of juggle visibility of your different polygroups. Now back to group by normals. If I do group by normals with 45 selected, you're gonna see it got this polygroup here and this bottom polygroup here because these angles are more severe than 45. However, if I crank this max angle up to 90, it's not gonna get anything. It's all just one polygroup here. Cause it's a very obtuse angle. If I bring this down, you're gonna see group by normals at 57 doesn't get any of these because these angles the threshold is less than 40 or less than 57. However, this one down here is greater than 57. So it went ahead and grabbed this one because this is almost 90, this is 90 degrees right here. So went ahead and gave that one a polygroup and then this, the rest of it a polygroup. So if I keep dragging this number smaller, group by normals, you're gonna see now it grabbed this top one. And if I keep dragging it smaller to 33, now it finally grabbed this last one. It's really shallow angle. So the smaller you make this number, the more angles it's gonna grab. Now you're gonna notice there's a group by normals open circle and closed circle. If you go to my ZBrush 2018 what's new, video 51 goes over the new group by normals algorithm. That comes in handy when you start using project primitive, which we'll get to in the hard surface section. But for now, this is a really easy way just to kind of create selection sets for your objects. So we put this back to like group by normal 39 degrees or 30, let's say 24 degrees. Now we have really nice easy selections, although now we have this one split down the middle. 30 degrees, there we go. We have really nice, easy selections of these different areas and aspects of our model here. Now, if we go back to our head that we were working on, if we do group by normals on this one, it's probably not gonna do a whole lot because all of these normals are very, very shallow because it's a nice, organic, soft object. 
you're going to see group visible. We'll group all visible polygons here. So if you hold down control shift and just isolate this one, do group visible and then hold down control shift tab to bring everything back. Now that's its own poly group. If we do group visible again with both of these showing, now all of it's grouped into one thing. Now I prefer to do, there's a group mast and then there's a group mast clear mast, uh, which is control W. So instead of doing group visible, what I like to do is hit, if I have nothing masked, I can hit control W and that'll just group visible. It's a little bit faster. However, if I hold down control and mask something, and I'm going to make this focus shift down and back to the zero here. So I've gone ahead and made a mask here. And now if I hit control W, it's going to group what I had masked and then clear the mask. So you can use this to kind of divide up the face. So if I undo that, let's say, and this is actually, this actually comes in handy when we want to start. For example, if you go to my YouTube live stream highlights, you're going to see we have a face here and we can start using poly groups. We can use mask or visibility to kind of divide our face up into different quadrants. So when we use Z remesh later, we'll get nice animatable topology. And how we do that is we can use a combination of either mask, let's go mask lasso. So we'll go ahead and mask this nose out. And then we can hit control W to group mask, clear mask. Or we can hold down control shift and do select lasso. Let's grab these ears. So we can grab a bunch of the ear here and then we can rotate, rotate around to the side, hold down control and then alt. And we can get rid of this extraneous geometry that we don't need. And be, remember you have X symmetry turned on. So you have to be a little bit careful about how that lasso goes through your object here, but we can kind of clean this up like so, hit control W and now that's grouped. And if you want to do cleanup with masking, again, you can hold down control and you can mask this out and then you can hold down control, go back to mask pin, hold down control alt, and then you can use this to kind of clean up your mask. And if you don't want to see your polyframe, you can either turn it off or you can leave it on and turn off line. And now you're just going to see the poly groups and the masking information, then control W and that'll go ahead and mask that area here.